Tara's Coffee Shop by Anne Banks. Just go down the ginnel, keep heading down and you'll hit the main street. Her landlady pointed out a steep cobbled track a couple of houses down. Can't go wrong. It was foggy and cold. The ginnel looked singularly unattractive and gloomy. Ellen strode down it, relieved to find that the cobbles weren't too slippery in the damp. Although it was only mid-afternoon, the fog seemed to get thicker and peculiarly wet and clingy as she got lower. Ellen felt as if she was sinking deeper and deeper into the darkness. There was no one about and the silence was oppressive. She was curiously relieved when she came out into the main street where she could at least see other people coming and going in the gloom. She spotted a bow-fronted cafe with Farrah's tea, coffee, written over its windows in gold. The door was open, luring her in. She could hear the clatter of coffee cups. Ellen shook off her fleece when she walked in, glad to be out of that fog, although tendrils of it seemed to follow her. Stairs past the top led up and down to what seemed to be several different floors. The smell of coffee drew her down to the lower level, where she could see there were several tables free. It was dimly lit, in keeping, she supposed, with the old-fashioned feel. A fire right at the back attracted her. She grabbed a seat facing the fire and draped her fleece over the back of the chair. Now then, cake or toasted tea cake, what should she go for? Decisions, decisions. Terrible afternoon, isn't it? I know the days are drawing in, but it's almost dark out there already. A voice broke into her deliberations. Ellen jumped. Odd, she hadn't noticed the woman sitting opposite her when she'd sat down. But then the light was poor. She seemed a bit insubstantial, but no, it's just a trick of the light. Oh, I'm so sorry, I didn't see you. Do you mind if I sit here? The fire? Not at all, dear, you carry on. Nice to get warm, isn't it? A young waitress took her order. Cappuccino and an almond croissant from the specials blackboard. I've been coming here for years. I can't seem to resist, the woman continues. She, she reminded Ellen of her great aunt with her thick country tweeds, round metal specks, and her hair in a tight grey bun. She had one of those interesting faces, a map of lines and wrinkles, hinting at a life well spent, and there was a definite twinkle in her eyes. Such an interesting place, I'm not surprised you keep coming back. Ellen looked round at the old beams and the uneven walls, shadowed and mysterious. It's been here a long time, the woman said, 200 years at least. That's amazing, she thought about it. Does that make it Victorian or Georgian? Regency, I believe. Just think, her new acquaintance mused. How many people would have come here in 200 years? I've been investigating the Ginnels, volunteered Ellen. I'm staying up the fell. The woman laughed. You'll need to be careful going back up in the dark. Ellen's waitress arrived with coffee and a warm croissant. The woman introduced herself as Mildred and they chatted a little. Ellen sipped her cappuccino. The croissant was delicious. The gloom and the warmth made her feel quite sleepy. It took a while for her to become conscious of new arrivals behind her. The cafe seemed to be filling up. A murmur of voices grew. Mildred noticed too. A lot of people here today, more than usual, I think. I expect it's the weather. Cafes always do well when it's wet, Ellen speculated, drawing nearer to the fire. She felt a bit shivery. Maybe. An enigmatic smile and a sideways glance made Ellen feel she'd missed something. Actually, it was odd, she thought, so near to closing time. Mildred hailed a couple who came over. They were oddly dressed, he in a rather dated suit, her in long skirts and a rather dashing green cape. More costume than normal clothing, Ellen thought. Her hair was swept up too, a bit formal for the daytime. Ellen really did feel cold now. She hoped she wasn't going down with something just when she was starting her holiday. She grabbed her fleece. 
I'm off now. Good to meet you, Mildred. That might be wise, dear. A cryptic reply. As Ellen turned, she saw that the cafe was indeed full. People stood in the narrow gaps between the tables chatting. Others making their ways to the upper rooms were congregating on the stairs. Many seemed to be in costume. A man in a frock coat held a top hat in his hand as he bowed to two middle-aged ladies in sweeping gowns. Another woman in a tailored 40s style suit chatted to a girl in a miniskirt. Ellen stared round. Several people had a translucence about them. Others seemed quite solid and real. How could this be? She found it difficult to breathe. We all come back, Mildred explained. Every year for coffee and a chat. Even the waitresses come back to serve us. Sure enough, waitresses in white mob caps and voluminous black pinafores rushed around serving their assorted customers. A stern lady, imposing in a full-length black dress and starched white apron, directed them. Ellen gazed, bewildered. In the shadowy corners, she was horrified to see disembodied faces, gathered, some serious, some smiling, some terribly sad. Mildred's steadying voice reached her through the panic. Don't be frightened, my dear, but go now, Mildred warned. Go very carefully in the ginnels, Ellen. It's always best to be safe indoors for All Hallows' Eve. Not all shades come back just for coffee and cakes. 